Hello everybody, welcome back to IZ8DWF uh, uh, repair bench and uh, we have on the bench um, 1540, Commodore 1540 or 1541 uh, long board, long logic uh, electronic board uh, this is uh, um, 1982 uh, version of the uh, Commodore uh, most famous disk drive. The 1540 was actually uh, only made for uh, the VIC-20 and uh, later the 1540 was uh, upgraded uh, to the 1541 uh, to be used with the uh, Commodore 64 uh, since the original uh, uh, 1540 was not able to work with uh, the Commodore 64 uh, because it was a bit too fast for, for the, um, the Commodore 64 itself uh, what Commodore did is uh, uh, change this ROM uh, on the 1540 and uh, that become the 1541 the 1541 can be uh, as a command uh, that can uh, speed up uh, the drive uh, and so as to work uh, with the week 20 uh, with the week 20 you can use a 1541 uh, even if not uh, uh, Use, uh, going at uh, maximum possible speed for the VIC-20 uh, the electronic board for the 1540 and the first revision the 1541 was uh, just the same electronic board but with the uh, upgraded ROM so this is 9012-2903 uh, which means this is uh, 15, uh, one of the early 1541. On a, a real 5041, uh, you will find uh, in place of the 1912 29, uh, you will find uh, a 325303 ROM. And unmodified uh, 1540 boards are very rare at the, the moment. So one of my viewers sent me this board to be repaired. Uh, this board has uh, had a previous uh, repair attempt. And all I know is that at sometimes it, something's uh, smoked in, the, in this board. <clears throat> so one of the first thing I would do uh, is a visual inspection of all the boards on both sides uh, to check for burn spot uh, or something burn components or what well, anything that can doesn't look normal then i will check all the semiconductors uh, with the multimeter the two rectifier bridges uh, every diode there are quite a lot on this board and every transistor everything that can be checked um, without power in the bar on and i will check for shorted tantalum capacitors that are really a lot on this board and then if um, nothing uh, bad shows up i will connect uh, um, one of my 1541 yearly uh, revisions uh, uh, mechanics with this board and see what happens okay uh, one thing I noticed is uh, this capacitor is uh, a bit broken so I decided to remove and uh, substitute it then on the other side of the board there have been some uh, rework because uh, one uh, uh, trace on the other side of the board has been cut uh, probably during the, the socketing of this chip uh, yeah. uh, it's difficult to see but this uh, the trace going uh, from uh, the sphere 
he is interrupted and uh, it has been bridged uh, on the other side and then see what we find uh, with uh, uh, diode check and transistor checks okay just a quick tutorial now to test a diode uh, with a multimeter First of all, your multimeter should have a digital multimeter, usually a diode position, and, uh, which uses the um, some ohm ranges, uh, the resistance checking ranges. Um, uh, we should uh, use the red positive uh, multimeter uh, test lead and uh, the black in this position the black uh, coin uh, where the diode band is um, then in this position the diode should read uh, something like uh, 0.5 to 0 0.7 uh, depending uh, if, if this is a, a silicon diode uh, it will read uh, between 0 0.5 and 0 0.7 uh, volts this is a voltage drop and it means the diode is in conducting uh, a current now we reverse the test leads with the red now on the band side uh, the multimeter should read whatever it is uh, it's uh, uh, open resistance or infinite resistance uh, uh, number which on this particular one is indicated by one point nothing it means uh, the diode is not conducting anything in this moment. Checking transistor junction is uh, almost the same. Uh, um, a transistor can be checked uh, because it has two junctions. One is base to emitter and another is base to collector. Uh, but the sense of the, the probes depends if the transistor is uh, uh, PNP or NPN type. With NPN type, uh, the red should go on the base. Um, you find a junction between base, a collector base, and emitter with the red uh, on the base, it's conducting. If you put the uh, uh, black on the base, uh, the, transi the NPN transistor will not conduct if it's working, of course. On the PNP, it's the contrary. Uh, with the black on the base, the PMP will be conducting, uh, and with the red, uh, red, I mean, on the base, it will not conduct. And keep in mind, we not, uh, cannot always test diodes and uh, transistors in, while in circuit, but most of the time we can. And when in doubt, when the reading uh, is not uh, um, matching what we expect, we can check on the schematic uh, if there are components in parallel, uh, low, low resistors, low ohm resistors can uh, have a, an effect on the readings, uh, so if we are really in doubt we must remove the, the part. Anyway, I found a couple of bad diodes uh, in circuit and let's see which ones. The first one was, is a CR12 that cracked open uh, as soon as I touched it. So, that must be removed for sure. The second one is CR17, which shows no continuity, uh, but it, sh it should and uh, so this is also bad and must be removed uh, from the part list of uh, this board we see that for CR17 we have a couple of options and the second one is the very common 1N4148 diode so we use one of these and for CR12 uh, we need a Zener diode uh, Alpha watt at uh, five point one volts, um, so that's very uh, common part also. And so let's get the part and uh, install the part of the board. Okay, so replace the CR twelve with the proper 
Zina Diod and replace ya uh, 17 with uh, 141 diode and then I tested uh, all the transistor junctions one by one uh, there are a few transistors here in this board also here uh, I have not found any short on the Tantalum uh, electrolytic uh, capacitors there is also another one here uh, the only uh, transistor junction that cannot be reliably um, probed uh, in circuit is a Q10 uh, base emit uh, junction. Uh, Q10 is a PNP transistor, so the black probe of uh, the multimeter goes on the base. Uh, by the way, the base is indicated in the screen and the emit uh, because uh, as we'll see on the schematic uh, we measure a um, uh, resistor which is in parallel to this uh, junction and the resistor is uh, 40 170 ohms so even if it, we invert uh, the two probes uh, we only measure the uh, the 40 170 um, resistor or the 70 ohm resistor here he is a q10 in the schematics as you can see there is that resistor in parallel between the meter and the base so now it's uh, time to uh, crack one of my 51 uh, drives open and install this board in place of the, uh, the drive board and see what happens. This is a, a 1983 1541 that I repaired uh, some time ago. And as comp since we can uh, have the two boards side by side now, we can compare what changes between these two. Uh, revisions. The power supply part remained uh, almost the same, it's always uh, two linear regulators that make a lot of heat. Um, the ROM revision uh, uh, changed from uh, 0 0.3 in this uh, board to 0 0.5 and uh, the RAM has been uh, Changed from four uh, 2114 chips uh, to a single uh, uh, 2016, which is the same uh, 2 kilobyte amount uh, with uh, only one chip this time. And that this can also save uh, some uh, glue logic around. And the other big change is this gate array, 40 pin gate array that replaces most of this discrete logic, uh, which is uh, Head movement, uh, uh, spin, uh, motor movement, and uh, well, something else. Uh, it replaces a lot of uh, logic, discrete logic. And well, almost the rest is uh, very similar. This has a discrete uh, crystal oscillator with uh, two chips, uh, while well, this one has an integrated. Uh, uh, TTL oscillator and that doesn't need almost anything uh, uh, outside to work. Well, all the rest is very similar, but of course the new board is uh, short. <laughs> That's why this one is called the long uh, um, uh, 1541 board, and this one is the short one. Uh, there is a, a less than one year difference between these two boards. Uh, this was uh, manufactured in the end of uh, 1982, judging from the uh, chip date codes. And this one was manufactured some sometimes uh, after the middle uh, 1983. Um, Another thing to notice is that uh, the short board has uh, all the connectors on one side, uh, but this one has some connectors here, another one here, 
and another one here so when replacing the board uh, we must pay uh, big attention where every connector goes and uh, what's the correct orientation uh, uh, of the connectors Another important thing to notice uh, when uh, uh, putting this this uh, long board into uh, 1541 mechanics uh, is that uh, these two mounting tabs have no corresponding hole in the PCB. These two one uh, have a corresponding hole, mounting hole. This also has the correct uh, spacing, this one too, every other mounting tab is okay. Only this two uh, goes uh, below the PCB uh, and they can short uh, some traces. So I will mask uh, these two tabs uh, with uh, insulating uh, tape. Uh, while doing uh, tests uh, on this uh, 1541 with the long board just to avoid any short okay, so for first test uh, just connected this connector which is the AC input uh, from the power transformer so the plan is to check um, the voltage regulator outputs uh, and on this side of CR4 we should find uh, the plus 5 uh, supply in this side of CR2 we should find the plus 12 and the common ground is on the minus side of either uh, of these two big capacitors and so let's power on uh, of course I didn't connect any other connector at the moment because I don't know if uh, something goes wrong really quickly so power down seems no smoke that's good so let's check uh, the 5 volts first here 5 point well that's a bit high but uh, it's okay it's in spec in 12 volts here yeah, this one is uh, a bit low but uh, what I think I should uh, it is good enough for the moment so let's start connecting uh, uh, motor heads and so on so the power LED connector goes in this position uh, these other three are almost on the same position like on the short board the head connector uh, is instead here so I have to reroute uh, this uh, cable under the board and uh, make the exit on this uh, other side but that's the last step because I can power on here and see if the motor runs uh, does anything at all so let's see okay the motor seems running uh, then it stops so probably the drive is initializing correctly let's feel if there is some really hot thing in the board doesn't seem so that's good so yeah that looks fine also the two regulators look not hot at all the rams these are the cheap yeah that looks good so uh, I think it's time really to uh, first uh, pass this connector on the other side of the board then hook up a Congo 64 finally complete record from, directly from uh, the monitor sorry for the flickering it seems it was not so easy uh, the Things never moves, nothing happens, uh, just the command gets stuck on searching. 
and so first thing I think I, I have uh, like I've done on other videos I have to check uh, the state of the signals on uh, on the serial bus but uh, this can and must be done disconnecting uh, uh, the cable okay here's the schematic of the serial bus uh, uh, connectors so first thing first uh, nothing is connected on the serial bus connectors as we uh, said before then uh, we should find uh, a plus 5 uh, um, level on pin 11 of uh, this is UC1 also here also on pin 3 uh, plus 5 on pin 3 of uh, UC1 uh, so this is an inverter, so if we have plus 5 here, we must have 0 on uh, pin 10. And if we have uh, plus 5 here, we must have 0 on pin 4. Uh, we uh, sh should find plus 5 because of these two resistors. R33, and this is not readable, I think it's R31. I will check on the actual board, so let's see. So this is pin uh, 11 of UC1, and as expected we have uh, the plus 5. And let's check on pin 3. 1, 2, 3, here. Uh, but we have 0 here. Well, not 0, but uh, not good at all. 1.3. So this must not happen. And R thirty three, which is the parallel, is this one. So here, what we have? Oh, we have five volts. Actually, so this is not making contact uh, from this point to this chip to pin three. Let's have a look. So UC1 was uh, replaced in a previous uh, uh, repair attempt. I don't know why. Um, this uh, has been socketed, of course. And so I just set the multimeter in uh, continuity mode and uh, hooked the probe on uh, R33 on the right side. So we must find continuity to L15, oh sorry, L15 on one side, L15 is here. And we don't, it seems, oh, we have continuity to L14 instead. Hmm. So it's better to double check everything. L14. Okay, so maybe this is uh, not the right schematic for this revision. This is um, 15.40.007. Uh, and the schematic we find uh, is. Uh, oh, I cannot read Japanese, but this is 15.40.008. So actually a different revision. So I have to double check uh, where uh, these two resistors are supposed to, supposed to go. Let's see. Okay, indeed, it seems that uh, R33 goes to pin 3. Let's see the that bus, which is that one in the bottom. Hope you can see it. And uh, it goes to L14 instead of L15. And also should go to pin 3 of UC1. But that's not connected anywhere. And also try to measure uh, from pin 3 to VCC to 5 volts to see if uh, there is any other. 1k resistor but I find no 1k 
from this pin 3 and pin 14 which is 5 volts like it should be here so the only difference in the schematic seems to be L14 uh, which is swapped with uh, L15 just the names but this goes to pin 3 anyway uh, check at this one and uh, it's good um, 5 volts, uh, 1k, 11, uh, L4, L4, L15 this time goes to 6 so these two numbers are just swapped on the actual board but uh, the schematic is correct so this is the um, solder side of the PCB I left uh, the multimeter probe connected on R33 which is uh, this pin here so um, the connection goes to this wire here which goes up to the L14 and uh, L15 and uh, uh, the connectors, the, the two IC connectors then where is it? okay here it is this track goes down here on this another uh, should go to another wire uh, I think is uh, this yeah this one we go up okay this one yes and then should go to pin 3 which is 1 2 3 should be this one uh, as you may remember from the start of the video this was a patch that was added uh, uh, on this repair because of a cut uh, connection on the other side of the PCB so this is another problem introduced by uh, the soldering this chip and uh, installing a socket without checking uh, if the connection were still good so I will try to install a jumper from this via where we have a steel continuity to pin 3 where there is no continuity Okay, um, so I added another bunch wire to jump the broken uh, uh, track and uh, I didn't mention but I replaced also this uh, wire if you remember the start of the video it was a big uh, uh, white wire that was not looking very good also the soldering was going over uh, another uh, trace uh, even if there is a the solder mask is never a good idea to uh, make a salt blobber go over another track so just uh, did a uh, slightly better job replacing uh, the original bodge wire so let's see what happens now i didn't bother uh, putting back all the connectors uh, i just uh, want to check if this soldered uh, this pin 3 problem on UC1 so let's recap pin 3 must be plus 5 pin 3 and yes plus 5 and if we go on pin 4 this should have a 0 volt because of this is a inverter uh, chip and yes 0 so I can put back the connectors, connect uh, C64 again, and try again. So let's try again. Okay, this time drive starts, but it is an error. But this may be uh, a simple issue, I think. Let's see. First try this simple program that uh, basically uh, tries to initialize the drive it means it will seek to track zero and then read the error channel and print the error channel then loop back uh, initializing if it uh, doesn't uh, solve the problem I think it must return under the oscilloscope and uh, and try to find what the problem really is so it's seeking hitting track zero stop seeking again but we have 
a 21 Rediver. And I'm afraid it goes, uh, yeah, goes forever this, like this. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. So there must be some other errors in this drive. So my approach when uh, this Edwina drive is uh, almost reading, um, well not reading actually, it's working fine uh, as the motor, stepper and the interface to the computer and so on. So my approach uh, would be to check the signals uh, uh, from the head connector to the first amplifier then the second amplifier and then the comp um, the comparator that will produce a bit stream that goes on the digital uh, section of the drive actually this uh, two amplifier and uh, one comparator uh, is uh, exactly the same on the short board uh, this circuit is exactly the same on the short board so if you uh, are not sure uh, but something uh, you can uh, compare uh, various signals on a short board and they uh, should match So let's see what we find Okay, actually uh, I'm going backwards from pin 7 of the comparator which is the final output of the analog amplification I'm finding a big problem the drive is just idle, just powered on, so probing pin 7 of the LM311 uh, If I make contact with the probe we have a big and crazy signal This is with AC coupling on uh, the oscilloscope channel and uh, half a volt per division vertical so this signal should not be here so let's go backwards and the input pins are uh, 2 and 3 on the 311 so let's probe pin 2 and there is something that should not be here because the drive is just idle there is no signal from the head so we should find uh, with a C coupling uh, just a steady line at zero volt. Pin three, the same thing. That should not be here. So let's go backwards. Um, let's check. Uh, of course, if there are uh, bad signal here and here we have also here and here so let's check the input of this one okay, this is UH5 um, and its inputs are on pin 1 also this signal isn't supposed to be here and the other input is on pin uh, 14 which is this one same thing, this is not supposed to be here. So let's go again backward. Uh, another amplifier. So if we find uh, something here and here on the input, uh, it means there is something on the output of this one. So let's see if it has also uh, these oscillations on its inputs. And since it's the same chip as before, but is UH7 this time, let's see on for 1 and 14 again. And yeah, we have this noise, but it is enough uh, to produce uh, an output. This is an amplifier. And also on pin 14, we have the same thing. So not good. Then why we have this signal here? This is the problem now. Okay, there is a 
nothing wrong I can find. I checked these transistors uh, at the beginning of the troubleshooting. Uh, oh, they all seem fine. Also, that these diodes are, are okay. And we are seeing uh, these uh, diodes in the schematics, uh, these transistors. Um, this is part of the right uh, uh, circuit and this is uh, uh, actually this chip this is UG4 and it has been changed uh, before I don't know why um, just don't don't know what's the history exactly of this uh, drive anyway this has been changed and actually this is uh, uh, this chip a 74LS07 and the schematics um, here we have 7407 without the LS usually you can uh, um, get away with the substitution but uh, quite suspicious now so let me remove this one first since it's okay. Okay, now I'm running the drive without uh, that uh, 74LS07, uh, checking uh, the output of the LM311, uh, and guess what? Nothing at all. Nothing at all. So that was not good chip from that position I guess let's try to put a good uh, 7407 there and see what happens so I replaced the, the, the chip with a good 7407 from my old stock collection this is a 1985 uh, chip new old stock and yeah, before I just check the one of the inputs, but if there is no signal on the input, uh, uh, also the output is okay. And so let's check again uh, this input uh, with the new chip in place. And also here we have uh, almost no signal, just uh, some noise, but this is normal. This is very normal. So let's try to... Uh, load uh, direct this directory and make some tests now works fine works fine so very good result uh, now i'm trying to format a disk and if everything is okay and you can write uh, um, I will just run uh, uh, one of the latest demo of for CE64 that uh, use uh, uh, very fast loaders for, for the stock 1541 so that will be the final test for this port and I hope it's fixed uh, totally by now let's see what happens
Now, at the end of this repair, I um, wanted to investigate for the 74 07 issue because I've checked the data sheets of uh, both the 7407 and the, the 74LS07 and uh, I don't think there is any reason why an LS07 should not work in this drive. Actually, also the 7417 uh, and the 74LS17 should work because that's what uh, originally in the manual, in the schematic of this uh, drive, this is actually the 7417, which is a 15 volt uh, version of the 7407. Um, so I think uh, this is not a bad chip, but this is a fake chip. And let's see why I think so. Uh, first of all, when I power on the drive, uh, we can check the voltages on the this side of the 07 and uh, let's see what we find okay so this is uh, the VCC power um, and of course we have the 5 volts rail then we have uh, an input and this is high um, almost 5 volt 4 and and the half then we have the output since uh, the input is high the output must be high also but since this is an open collector uh, buffer we can have a higher voltage um, of uh, higher of um, from 5 volts i mean uh, so we have actually 11 point uh, something and this is okay because uh, the head uh, input output controller is working at uh, uh, control circuit is working at 12 volts so again we have an, uh, another input I and its output uh, at uh, 11 point something then again uh, another input which is high and another output which is at 11 point something so that is supposed uh, how it's supposed to work because uh, the outputs are open collector uh, kind of outputs and uh, let's see on the chip schematic what that means okay this is the schematic uh, from the data sheet of the 7407 uh, this is one gate, there are six uh, identical gates on a single chip and we are uh, mostly interested in the output which as you can see on the uh, right of uh, the schematic is just the collector of uh, the rightmost transistor that means uh, when the transistor is uh, turned off uh, it happens that this uh, collector is floating. There is no connection anywhere until we uh, go over the breakdown voltage of this transistor, which for a 7407 is 30 volt. So uh, what happens is that uh, when the input is high, the collector of the last transistor is floating. Uh, so we can uh, have uh, the 11, uh, almost uh, 11 and a half, uh, 11.6 uh, volts that we have seen on the 1541 uh, board. And when the input is low, uh, this transistor is turned on uh, in, and uh, the, uh, the output collector is uh, at the ground potential at zero volt. So the output is either uh, floating or at zero volt. This instead is the schematic of one gate of a 74LS07, uh, which is a bit more, more complicated, but uh, the output is the same thing. It's an open collector uh, of the last transistor. So the data sheets are, are have really similar values uh, as uh, 
for the input voltages, input currents, uh, uh, output uh, uh, voltage with stand that is always uh, 30 volt for an LS07. Um, so even in uh, if you use a, a 74 LS07, uh, we only can have or either floating output or the output uh, uh, going uh, uh, to zero volt. Uh, that's uh, what open collector means in the end. Now let's see what happens now with the what I believe is a fake chip. Uh, we always uh, have the correct VCC on pin 14 and then the input, the first input is still high, four and a half, but its output uh, is now a bit uh, something a uh, bit more than five five and eight so this chip is actually uh, driving or clamping uh, its output voltage so this has not a uh, open collector at all and if we check all the outputs they are all the same uh, this one also clamped at five point something uh, I believe it's not a uh, bad uh, LS07. This uh, is uh, just a fake chip, and uh, let's see uh, better why I think so. Let's check uh, the outputs uh, in diode mode with the multimeter. Now, this is uh, the VCC pin, and this is an output. And let's see what we find a diode drop and if I go on another output uh, same diode drop and so every output uh, even on the other side of the chip uh, is having a, a diode uh, uh, clump into VCC and it should not uh, be the case uh, since we have seen on the schematic uh, the output should be just an open collector of course if i probe in reverse uh, there is nothing open circuit so it means there is no short developed inside uh, this chip but uh, it's just uh, a real diode uh, in the output uh, circuit of this uh, this chip Panel test, uh, let's check uh, the same diode uh, presence uh, on the real 7407. Uh, yes, you can see open circuit, and it's the same on all the outputs. Open circuit, again, open circuit. So, this is uh, matching uh, what we see in the datasheet schematic. So, in the end, uh, here we had a bad chip that was causing uh, uh, most of the faults uh, but I don't know if the diode, the broken diodes or the, the interrupted one we have found at the beginning uh, were related with this, I don't know the circuit is uh, um, close enough but uh, I cannot tell that so an LS07 is a perfect substitution for a 7407, but beware of the false uh, chips. Um, it's always you have to double check when you buy uh, vintage chips uh, in uh, modern times. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, quite long repair, and if you did, uh, please uh, thumb up and see you next time thank you for watching